Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL BSL 17 Hasu League round of 32 group H. We have Napoleon starting the upper right hand corner as the hot pink Zerg. Bottom left hand corner we have Fisheye starting as the teal Protoss. This, excuse me, this is on shooting break. The background information on Napoleon in the tradition of Rhett and many other Zerg <laughs> gamers. For all I know, this is Rhett. No, he's uh, this is a Finnish. Finnish not as in ending, but Finnish is in from Finland, a uh, Zerg player. He uh, plays, they, they have him listed as random. He's not precisely a random player. What he does is he race picks. So he plays Zerg versus Protoss and Zerg versus Terran, but he plays Terran versus Zerg, which uh, is something in the foreigner community that has been allowed for some reason in many tournaments. I kind of don't like that, to be honest, but I understand why players do that because of the front, just because of how razor thin and frustrating the ZVZ matchup can be. I know that Zerg players are like, ah, it's just a coin toss or have that feeling about it tend to have that approach more than others. But we'll see how Napoleon does against Fisheye. I have a feeling that they're, they know each other quite well, hence the chatter in between. And Fisheye going for an early scout. Pylon at the natural expansion, which leads me to believe we're going to have a forge first opener here from Fisheye. There is a lot of instability in this matchup right this second from ranging from I move back to forge first opener all the way to more one base base protoss play and I feel like the I wouldn't be shocked to see one base protoss play reign supreme for a little while with the move back towards I don't know what's happened with the gateway opener where zerg maybe have just figured it out in precision altogether or have developed some new build against it I don't know what's happening there where protoss have suddenly decided to abandon it but it seems like the forge first still isn't having a massive amount of success against Zerg, particularly with 973 adjustments. Fisheye checking out the perimeter. Ooh, going for a cannon rush. So he's got the forge, gonna be sneaky. Does Napoleon, now let's see if Napoleon scouts it is the next question. What's clever about this as well? Oh, never mind, a cancel. Oh man, that's gonna be a lost 33 resources. I would have loved to see that actually. Instead, Fisheye going to play heads up. Walking back in, spawning pool about halfway finished, by the way. Behind a lot of this, gonna drop that Nexus instead. Drone making its way across to get the scouting information. I would have loved to see that. I don't, oh well. Uh, I actually wanna see Fisheye or maybe some other Protoss players with the probe, maybe keep it in the dark for a while to see if Zerg react to that as well. Gateway up, Napoleon able to skirt that drone through, but recognizing he can't do much aside from recognize that it's a Nexus opener, gonna go ahead and fold his way back. We do have a pair of Zerglings being constructed, which feels weird because Zerglings, I, I always feel weird saying that, because it is two, right? But they spawn in two, so technically it's a quartet. Maybe I should start saying that, a quartet of Zerglings being constructed, rather than a duo or whatever, because of their twin nature. Natural Gemini. Uh, Photon Cannon warping in. I think this is gonna be in time, and a quick third base from Napoleon. So I'm expecting more Mutalisk three base opener. It is pot. There's a lot of flexibility these days for Zerg is the other thing for like going into five hatchery, four hatchery. So we'll see what he's up to. Probes blockading the, the lanes just in case as that cannon completes. No first sell it as of yet. So I'm sure, I'm curious, is Fisher gonna go for an additional Nexus behind this? Cause he's floating a lot of resources. Curiously, Cybernetics core finally dropping with a pretty late gas. In the main, actually. Let's see if he goes for an additional gas at his natural expansion to try to up this. It looks like the layer was being constructed at the natural expansion to try to hide a little bit of that information. Let's see if Fisheye is also able to detect that hatchery at the 12 o'clock base before the Zerglings are able to cycle around. We do have Zergling speed being invested in. So it is possible that the layer is primarily for show. We'll have to see. That's not to say that Zergling speed automatically means that this layer isn't going to turn into a spire, but oftentimes Zergling speed as an investment means you want to deny the scout as quickly as possible. And on top of that, allow Zerglings to be a little bit more functional in the mid game at denying additional information. So sometimes Zerg players will skip it altogether until there's uh, timings on Zealot threats and things like that. Probe able to cycle around, however, and get a good look at that drone saturation. 
Fisheye doing stereotypical Protoss stuff. He's got that Stargate. He is, he does have that second gas up, which leads me to believe he's going to go for more of a tech route. As far as a as far as follow up play, he is going plus one weapons into this. And we, so expecting Spire play. So and we do see that Spire in construction. A Zealot somehow made it to the twelve o'clock location, just hiding behind the lines, waiting for the Zerglings to approach. Unfortunately, just moved out of position, able to move right back into position though. Although I think this is still exposed to some Zerglings to the north. It looks like a probe got killed in the meantime. Yeah, just a, just a pixel off there from Fisheye. And so unfortunately, the Zerglings able to get a really efficient kill right there on Surround. Preserve the entirety of their health. Plus one weapons on the way. And Overlord sacrificing himself to try to get a, a look at the tech. It looks like we are going to see a Bisu Buildish style. Fourth hatch redropping outside natural expansion for Napoleon. Yeah, getting no information, actually, to the south. Is the Corsair going to go after him? It looks like no instead the Corsair. I'm a little bit surprised that Fisheye is actually dedicating this Corsair towards uh, the scouting information because I feel like he actually got a pretty good Eiffel with that probe. He's going to go fifth hatchery. Maybe he's a little bit concerned about uh, Napoleon's ability to be, be sneaky. If he moves it across that natural expansion... Should be able to detect that second gas, which suggests we're more likely going to see a large mutilisk play, which means that plus one weapons is going to be absolutely key. Going for an overlord in the main, so we're going to allow that second Corsair, delaying actually in building that additional Corsair half a second, maybe bed babysitting. Scourge, there's some Scourge. Uh, Fisheye not getting out of there, and that hurts a lot, particularly with the plus one weapons upgrade. That's a big hit because you need to preserve those initial Corsair to get to that really critical five count with the plus one weapons to really make those Corsair beneficial. And so losing that first Corsair really hurts and can negate their ability to get out on the map and perform uh, quite a bit. Hydralisk end dropping. We see, looks like we're seeing a switch back towards Hydralisk play for Napoleon. So going, folding back into uh, looks like five hatch Hydralisk, we have an evolution evolution chamber with plus one weapons being upgraded. A Zergling sacrificing itself just to try to get eyes. And the Scourge moving forward to go ahead and try to get some scouting information as well. If they just move a little bit in, they're going to be able to see that Templar archives. Which suggests, yeah, there are going to be Dark Templar out on the map. Plus one weapons just about finished. But again, because of just not, not a strong dedication on Fisheye's part. Oh, is he going to... Lost another Corsair. Oh my goodness. Honestly, that's that's serious losses, in my opinion, especially with that plus one weapons in investment. So six zealots marching out. I don't think this is enough to do a lot of damage with this nice sim city to the north. And Zerglings absolutely surrounding that sunken colony. Some nice drone drilling as well. One Hydralisk going to lose its life. So this is a little bit of ma lost mining time, but looks like it's going to be a strong defense from Napoleon overall. Lost a drone thus far as the Hydralisks steam rolling in to kill the, the remaining of the, the remaining zealots was the drones protecting themselves but even at 37 this is a pretty healthy drone count 36 so a few drones killed but drones in a sunken colony and no zealots left dark templar making its way out but without the corsair support to really knock down the overlords fourth gateway dropping i'm not saying this is game over but this is uh overlord speed is engaged did Napoleon see that? Did not see the Dark Templar. Okay, now saw the Dark Templar. Going to wind right back towards that natural expansion and Overlord making its way. It doesn't look like... Is there an Overlord in the main is the next question. I don't know if this Dark Templar is going to be able to get a drone kill. Some additional Hydros building there. Overlord. So maybe one drone kill. Two drone kills, but still, honestly, it's not a lot. And in the meantime, cannons need to be dropped on the forward front. We've got one Psy Storm. Right there, a lot of High Templar, but that's still going to give Napoleon a good degree of map control to grab additional expansions if he wants. And I don't see the... <clears throat> probably the problem with going that Templar tech and getting that Dark Templar and going for the Corsair and plus one weapons is that delays the robotics facility quite a bit, which means if there are lurkers out in the field, which actually it looks like there's going to be a skip in lurker tech. Overall, Napoleon going straight to Hive. But regardless, it's going to have to be... We'll see if Fisheye can, can still close this out. Right now, he does have a supply lead. Uh, Napoleon, though, has a really healthy economy. 
He's got pretty good tech, and he still has map position right this second. But a, a good amount, I think I'm just overstating how... Because uh, Napoleon actually not macroing all that well behind this. He's got a healthy economy. He's got a lot of resources to work with. He hasn't grabbed any additional bases behind this. He does have the Hydralisk on the front. He's able to deny that plus one armor. But he's down 30 supply because of that gateway flood. Nice double size storm. Nice dodge from Napoleon as well. But yeah, this massive gateway flood behind this is going to allow Fisheye to stage a lot of troops very, very rapidly. Napoleon now macroing a little bit, able to catch up a bit in that supply deficit. The Zealots, with the Zealot leg speed, able to move forward. But we are seeing a tech switch into Mutalisks from Napoleon. And there aren't any defensive cannons at the main or the natural expansion. And this natural expansion is very, very exposed. So this could be a huge shift, particularly if the Mutalisks don't can just rely on the Hydralisks, which I believe they can. So it looks like the Mutalisks are going to reveal themselves. Let's see if Fisheye gets the react. There's some Psy Storm, but honestly, the Mutalisks should be able to dodge that Psy Storm without too much trouble. Maybe even pick off a good amount of high, uh, high Templar behind this. Now dropping a defensive cannon. I don't know that the defensive cannon is going to be in time. And this is a massive amount of troops making its way. So Fisheye needs to preserve. He, he does have three plus one weapon Corsair at the very least. A few, sorry, four. That actually might be sufficient to deal with this. Napoleon trying to spread some Scourge nearby. Look like they're able to clear that out. Nice size Storm dodge as well. A High Templar are going to get picked off most certainly in between all of this. Two very damaged Corsair in the meantime. It's a lot of gas loss. And Napoleon is grabbing additional base. He doesn't have that, ma he doesn't have the macro there yet, so it's not kicked in with drones as of yet, but still in a pretty solid position. 20 supply lead for Fisheye. He's going to have to walk his way out. That was... Looks like he's got a good amount of size storm, so maybe he can get something done, but he does need to take out a base or two out and establish his third at some point in the midst of this. Part of the problem for Protoss on this map is because this natural expansion is at 4,000 gas, and honestly, because this third's a mineral only and also behind a double uh, inverted ramp you really it, it, I, I think it makes it troublesome for Protoss versus Zerg in this map matchup in particular slew of lurkers being morphed out on the front Napoleon currently playing defensive is within a comfortable supply range plus one weapons finished let's try to look at the upgrade only plus one weapons finished for Fisheye so he does not have a weapons upgrade advantage and it looks like plus one weapons for the Zerglings going to finish in not too long. And we also have Adrenal Upgrades. And that is going to... I've seen a lot of Zerg players doing this recently, which is moving very quickly to Hive Tech to get that Adrenal Upgrade, because that just allows Zergling... If you can get a Zergling Lurker, it's a very strong situation. Can shred a lot of what Protoss can throw out at you. The Zealot's getting there, and again, the Robotic's not there, and not enough Size Storm, I think, to clear this. There's an Observer finally making its way forward. No Hydralis to be able to pick it off. The Zergling's able to get exposure. The Mutalist moving in one Eye Templar down. Two High Templar, and I don't know that that was a good trade for Napoleon. He ended up losing a lot of Mutalisks. Fisheye in a good position. He's got a 40 supply lead. If he can just move out and again, maybe slow Napoleon's economy or get some favorable trades on the front, he'll be okay. It looks like at the moment, he just wants to provide a threat, bleed off some troops while he establishes that additional base. And doing a good job of killing some overlords. Not a lot of anti-air defense right this second. Zergling's now pushing out. Keep in mind, they are adrenal upgraded. They don't have that carapace upgrade yet, which means the Zealots, with that plus one armor, will be able to trade decently. And Fisheye doing a great job positionally here. So side storming a few of his own Zealots there to the north, but getting a good amount of kills. And you can see the difference, honestly, in the supply exchange. 40 supply up. Napoleon now engaging from the rear. Great side storm on that from Fisheye, obliterating that Hydralisk army right there. Corsair is continuing to remain active around out in the map. And honestly, everything's looking bonus Fisheye all of a sudden. Napoleon's still mining happily behind all of this, but Fisheye is able to get that third base up. He does need to get that saturated ASAP. Napoleon, in theory, it should have a stronger economy. Starting to shell up a bit, but honestly, a lot of troops getting bled off, and that was a fantastic exchange, and the Zealot's going to be able to march up and filter back in. And these Corsair have been mostly untouched and able to kill a lot of overlords behind a lot of this. One problem for Fisheye, though, is, is this is still a very high drone count. And he hasn't breached or taken out a base. It looks like there's some Zealots sitting outside that 1 o'clock position. Now moving in. And 
in Brood War Theory, if, if Zerg is up a base, that usually means they're in a stronger situation at even bases, Protoss is ahead, and it looks like Fisheye is grabbing that 6 o'clock location. So if he can just hold his position, keep these troops thinned, and hold on for the long term, he will end up being in a great position. That's a lot of grouped up lurkers. Great side storm from Fisheye. Going to be able to wipe out three of them very, very rapidly. The Zergling starting to move forward and try to engage this. One problem for Fisheye might be the upgrades. Again, and you can see the Adrenal Upgrade Zerglings, even in small amounts, getting on top of the Dragoons, able to to group them. This is high ground versus low ground versus the Hydralisks right here. The Observer looks like it's been, is out of position to deal with the Lurkers with the low ground. And the Zealots have been pushed out. But Fisheye still has a standing army. He's still got a 20 supply lead. He's got, I don't know if I want to say that this bank, we'll have to see in the supply differentials right this second, but Fisheye looking really, really strong right this second. Another base being snuck at the 3 o'clock position for Napoleon. The Zergling's able to get on top of a few of the Dragoons. Fisheye doesn't have the Zealots or the Psy Storm to bleed it. No, the Zealots a little bit too far forward, and plus two weapons has finished for those Lurkers, which means they're shredding those Zealots all the more rapidly. And on the upgrade, the saving grace for Napoleon, so despite the massive supply lead for Fisheye, he's going to have to back off because of the upgrade advantage in that last exchange really moving in Napoleon's favor. Let's see if Fisheye if Fish can find this 3 o'clock base though and take it out. Some cannons coming up with the 6 o'clock. The main mind out for Fisheye. Natural expansion looking somewhat thin so he's going to be back down to 2 bases. And might want to establish an additional one for himself again to keep the numbers advantage. But I gotta say Napoleon has held on. The upgrades have continued. And this could be scary. Because we got double evolution chamber behind this. And I think it's only a single forge for Fisheye. And Psystorm able to clean up the Zerglings, but going to take out the High Templar. And most Zerg will take that trade nine times out of ten. They are going to, there's discovery of the six o'clock base, but not a denial of it. The Zealot going to be able to clear out that three o'clock. Some Zerglings spawning. And you can see in that exchange how quickly the Zerglings are able to, to win that exchange. Another base being dropped from a Napoleon. So Napoleon, yeah, just going to wait for that upgrade advantage, going to make sure Fisheye stays back, and just try to take bases where Fisheye is not, and run around in an open field, maybe get some stragglers. And right now, he's having a lot of success. That's another High Templar getting picked off in midfield. Still 20 supply lead for Fisheye. I am, again, concerned. He's dropping another forge now, I think, recognizing the, the upgrade problem. But... On top of this, we got Defiler and Consume shortly to join. Plague probably going to follow, and another Mutalisk army being constructed. Do we have cannons? So we do have plenty of cannons to maybe repel, excuse me, to repel this, but that is going to leave a lot of the High Templar very, very exposed. Zerglings continuing to push in in small numbers. I think Nap Napoleon just happy to throw those Zerglings away. They're cheap. They keep Fisheye occupied. Every once in a while, they're catching a High Templar. That base is going to get wiped out at the 1 o'clock location again. Mutalists engaging. Empty size. Yeah, able to empty the High Templar and the size storm, which is huge. Especially with the Filers about to come into play, which means essentially Fisheye's only defense against Dark Swarm is going to be Zealots. They do have plus two weapons at this stage, but the Zerglings with the Adrenal upgrade are going to be very challenging to contend with. And if there's any form of Lurker support, Napoleon's going to be in a very, very strong situation despite that 30 supply deficit. Dragoon moving in. And yeah, no no Defiler as of yet. Net, there's the Defilers. Once there's a Dark Swarm, this is going to be a dead army for Fisheye. All he can do is walk away and allow the Zerglings to get additional hits in the space of this. Finally, some Zealots starting to peel in, but you can hear all of the Dragoons dying one after another in the midst of this. Finally, it looks like one High Templar survived and was able to drop some Psy Storm. A lot of Zealots marching out. Let's see if Napoleon actually does kind of a clever switch. He's got a really strong economy and a massive amount of gas to work with, so he could go for another switch into Mutalus. He's had trouble establishing this base. But as Lurker is moving out, with the Defiler support, I don't know that Fisheye can contend in open field with this army. He's going to have to shell up. He's got three cannons already to the bottom right. Yeah, he's going to have to shell up and wait for the long game. Maybe get some shuttles up. Looks like that three o'clock base is already mining. 
up and running. That main mined out for Napoleon. Natural expansion still barely up and running. It looks like he's going to start working on that gas. But now Napoleon can grab some additional bases. The Zerglings, with, yeah, without defense, the Zerglings looks like there's not a Defiler alongside and they're coming in piecemeal, but they shred buildings so rapidly. And the Lurkers are just bonus on top of it. The Observer delayed, which means, never mind, the, the Observer getting there right in time. I think there's the, forget what it's called, the uh, range visual upgrade, but the cannons have been taken out, which is certainly going to soften up this base. And this is now a lot of territory to try to defend. As I was speaking of that shuttle, it looks like we do have Fisheye anticipating this. As expected, Psy Storm dropped. Going to go ahead and clear a lot of drones, and he might be able to get another drop out of this. Napoleon engaging with everything he has in the bottom right. Pulling back, and this is now a razor-thin margin game. 20 supply differential. Still solid upgrades. 3-2. I think Napoleon's still maintaining that upgrade advantage that will close with that double forge, but it's going to take some time, and... We're going to need some more Archons and potentially some Reavers to help defend bottom right now. Did I miss a shuttle drop? I think I might have missed a shuttle dropping or getting eliminated in the background here. But it looks like Napoleon has... He's honestly very close in the worker count, which is not good news for any Protoss player. More cannons getting dropped bottom right. Napoleon throwing some additional Zerglings uh, down. He's hurting for minerals right this second. Still hasn't re-grabbed the top left. He's got, it looks like a small Mutalisk army in that position. I'm going to assume that the, the, the Mutalisks were able to wipe out that shuttle. So another base being established. This base has mostly been untouched by Napoleon. That actually might have been a better target with the inverted ramp. Dragoons. Got that red goop on them, which is going to soften them up quite considerably. I kind of like Napoleon's position here. I don't know who to call on this. Multiple points, I'm like, well, Napoleon's got, well, nope, Fisheye's gonna pull ahead. Very back and forth match. We're gonna see the Lurker Sport defense. However, the Sport Colony's not quite there in time. A good spread, softening up this attack force and that previous plague really paying a benefit and that Observer now picked off, which means the remaining Lurkers will be able to wipe this army up. Scourge getting taken care of by Psystorm, but that might free up some supply from Napoleon overall. So yeah, Fisheye going to have to get another shuttle out there. I think that is the way he's got to get it done. And he, yeah, he's already built robotics facility bottom right. He has a ro robotics facility 6 o'clock position. But still needs to find a way to... He, he does have plus one on the Corsair. Plus two armor is finished for those Mutalisks, which means they're going to be very, very powerful and hard to deal with. One nice thing for Fisheye is he can start grabbing bottom right, but right now Napoleon has gained a supply lead. He's got a worker lead, which usually spells out doom for Protoss. That's not to say this is insurmountable, but this is going to be a challenge from a late game perspective. And on top of that, Ventral Sacks transporting, finishing for Napoleon, which is going to allow him to be very immobile. Oh, the Mutalisks. Does he see it? The shuttle is spotted bottom right. He just needs to move over and that's going to be some dead high templar and fish i honestly needed that mobile and active to try to deal with the army looks like he he's able to keep it alive another reaver transporting bottom right the archon gonna move in to try to deal with those three mutalists but napoleon seizing the rest of the map oh shuttle dropping high templar did make it a few additional drones getting wiped out but the high templar has been dispatched. 20 supply lead now for Napoleon. Tough situation. Did the... What happened to the Archon here? Archon looks like it moved back towards the front. Single Dragoon. Trying to contend with the Mutalisks. It's going to get wiped out. And I... Napoleon playing very passively. Right this second. But I think he recognizes that he's got a superior amount of the map. He can go ahead and grab this 9 o'clock base at leisure. So it's up to Fisheye to come to him to really even things out. We've got three Zealots making the way to the north. So that is going to be a nice distractionary attack. Three drones potentially exposed. A nice plague to try to even things up. That was very heads up from Napoleon. Some Zealots redrawing, expecting a counterattack. But again, I don't know that Napoleon's going to bother with counterattacking in the midst of this. Never mind, Fisheye not bothering to engage a counterattack. Instead, moving his army around. Zerglings were able to clean that up post-plague. Looks like a Lurker Egg eating some damage. Some additional troops. Look at all the purple 
Or I should say Hot Pink making its way top left. Lurkers just need to burrow here, and I don't think... Where's the Observer? Not a lot of Observers, not a lot of Side Storm. On top of that, we got the Defiler dropping some Dark Swarm. Reaver is here. Reaver could get some damage done. Can the Reaver shoot through the eggs? Yes. So getting some damage done there. Fish Eye going to go ahead and back out. And get some... So I assume this is going to be, yeah, Plague, and then are the Mutalists going to make their way that direction? Fish Eye trying to open up maybe an attack somewhere else on the map. <laughs> a Guardian attack. In the meantime, bottom right, so that's where those Mutalisks have been this entire time, although one of them is going to get taken out by a cannon through bad positioning. Napoleon showing us everything. Weaver very, very weak. The Zergling having trouble with that targeting attack. So at least that being denied, but Napoleon tr constantly keeping his probe, his drone count, I should say, high. Fisheye losing critical minerals. Building a scout, a single scout, to try to deal with everything else. It looks like that Reaver was dispatched. I assume it was scooped up in the shuttle and then taken out. Otherwise, by the Scourge. And I don't think, oh, never mind. No, it was just taken out on the ground, it looks like. And now Napoleon going to take top left. I, it, it's kind of an afterthought to grab the 9 o'clock position. And from there, I don't think Fisheye has a strong enough economy to contend overall. So Napoleon can just sit back, get to 200, hold map control, plant his bases, mine things out, and theoretically that should be a win. Fisheye's had some fantastic exchanges up to this stage. It's just, yeah, I think this is just a challenging map. Overall, the scout in action. I love seeing scouts manage to get the one kill. Bottom right, it's rare to see a scout, but I think it was the appropriate unit in this situation. Napoleon's starting to group up to deny that mineral only nearby, nearby bottom right. There is an overlord to see that that nexus is building. Keep in mind, we do also have overlord drop behind this, so we could see unit drops to bottom right. Very difficult for Protoss in the late game on this, now that I look at it as well. Defiler moving up, dropping a Dark Swarm. The Zerglings swarming in. The Lurker getting boxed out a little bit, though. And it looks like we didn't have a follow-up Plague to speed things up. I don't know that it's going to matter, though, because those Zerglings pushing all the way in. It looks like, oh, we got two Reavers in the back edge able to clear those Zerglings out. A March of Zealots making their way to try to defend this. This is a critical base to hold. No Observer, however, so the Zealot's going to have to turn right back around, and we do have another Plague on those critical Reavers bottom right, and more Zerglings in construction. Napoleon with a very healthy worker count, still with the supply lead, starting to march a bunch of units in. Drones now filtering top left. A lot of hatcheries to work with as well. I... Not sure what Fisheye can do from this situation, to be honest. He's very much pinned in. He's just got to mine what he can and just hope that he gets better Psy Storms or things like that. But Napoleon's been very, very patient with his late game engagements. Some Overlords moving up. I wouldn't be surprised to see some drops. The Zergling's starting to flood in. Dark Swarm to negate the cannons. If the Hydralisks engage just a little bit, they should be able to take those Reavers out. The Zealot's now trying to make their way in and with the Observers in position, but they're getting plagued. It's kind of an interesting two-front battle where the Zealot's trying to move up to connect to protect the Reavers to the south. Battle Drone wanted to get a piece of this. Unfortunately, the Dark Swarm going to protect the Reavers here for Napoleon. Not the Reaver to the south, however. So Napoleon flubbing that engagement slightly, and now Fisheye able to find a window to push through. However, this is still... Bleeding troops and resources overall for Fisheye, where Napoleon has, because he's got just a lot of, and what, oof, look at this, grabbing a nearby hatchery just to make sure that gets denied, grabbing everything else out on the map while he continues to pin Fisheye into this bottom right hand corner. So 6 o'clock base only has that gas mining. This is the last bit of minerals here for Fisheye. He's got to basically rely on High Templar from here on out. And the Reavers almost become a liability at this stage because the Reavers have to produce Scarabs, which cost minerals. Overall, probes trying to make their way bottom right. Oof. Taking heavy losses on their way, but I think Fisheye just has to do it this way. 
because he's throwing out a sacrificial zealot to try to get as many through as possible. Lurker's not able to get the follow-up shot. So at the very least, Fisheye able to get that those probes to the bottom right. More plague on the cannons that remain. And Napoleon now has a 70 supply lead. If he just, ooh, gonna morph some more guardians, he can throw everything in the kitchen sink. Now the bottom right, and I want to come up with a Sim uh, Simpsons reference for Twitch chat. As far as a metaphor, as far as this attack to the bottom right. But I cannot come up with it right this second. Maybe YouTube chat will be able to come up with one overall. The thing that's blocking it is his monorail. Just monorail repeating over and over again. Because Lisa needs braces. Anyway, nonwithstanding. Nice defense thus far from Fisheye. He is getting the exchanges he's looking for. But we've got some Guardians just waiting in the meantime. That's going to be it for the Reavers, bottom right. Those cannons very quickly going to get wiped out as well. I don't see... Okay, we do have a High Templar that's got a good amount of Side Storm. The Guardians are pretty well spread. But more Zerglings crashing their way down. And the High Templar getting picked off. And more Plague. Where did that play even land from? Catching a lot of the Reaver, it looks like the Scout pushing position, but the Mutalists actually, with their plus two weapons upgrade, should be able to deal with that Scout. As long as Napoleon's on top of his game, yeah. Guardian once again pushing forward. Scout trying to get what damage it can. They're beefy at the very least, they got a lot of base hit points. Now being forced back. And again, Napoleon just... Hammering into Fisheye while continuing to just macro. And he's got Scourge patrolling back there. It's it's Napoleon's game to lose at this stage. Is what it comes down to. Scout's taken out, but as is everything that was in the air, top right. Napoleon kind of playing with his food right this second. Zealots and Archons looking to join the front. We still have Lurkers. Bottom right, a good amount of Reavers still holding. One advantage for Fisheye is, is this holds a lot of territory. Well, I guess two bases, ultimately. Bottom right, but Napoleon just needs to gather up. He's got a lot of his army. And some empty drones. As long as he, if he just gathers up his army and attacks into this, should be victory. Guardians continuing to hammer away at this bottom right. That's going to force more Size Storm expenditures. And as soon as the Size Storm's out... He might toss the Zerglings in. Nice dodge right there. One time when it's a, in gaming where that's a compliment. Nice dodge. High Templar in shuttles trying to... I might have missed some, some shuttle drops behind this, but looking at the healthy drone count, I don't know that it is all that significant. But again, this is bleeding additional Psy Storm, which could open up things for the follow-up Zerglings. Fi the Guardians. Two of them at least wiped out, but a Guardian for a Psy Storm I think is worth it still for Napoleon overall. Banks actually surprisingly close. Creep Colony being built. Napoleon actually might want to make a move on because if Fisheye does manage to get a 200-200 army, Death Ball rolling, he could maybe crawl out with the Sweevers and go for a slow push, wipe out some territory to the north and just keep slow pushing from there. He snuck actually some troops out to maybe grab the 9 o'clock. I don't know that that's really defensible. More a desperation grab, I think, overall. Napoleon with a sizable bank. More size Storm. Dealing with the Guardians. He's not doing the follow-up of sending the Zerglings in, however. Just letting the Guardians attack into this. A few cannons. Now moving in with the Hydralisks. Still a little bit of Size Storm to soften that up. So Guardians now taken care of. Gateway gonna drop as soon as it's completed. Fisheye just trying to buy time and, and get more hits. But honestly, I think this might be... The too little too late moment as everything's starting to flood forward. Just needs to we just need some A move here from Napoleon and some mutalists without cannon protection. Making it on top of the Reavers and Sidestorm over the probe lines is never a good situation. The Dark Templar alongside, but the Overlord's right there as well. So now even a battle drone making its way in. So I think that's gonna be it. For Fisheye, but no! Archons out of nowhere from the left, and this is what I was talking about from the concern, but they're eating so much Lurker Fire. 
they're nearly getting wiped out on approach. So Archons and some High Templar are able to flood in last second. And they might be able to hold this, but more units now moving in for Napoleon. Is he going to be able to hold it? That's a lot of Archons, and they are fully upgraded, and there's the Overlord slightly out of position, so the Dark Templar are able to get some additional damage. That Guardian still pecking away at everything. Napoleon continuing to push things in. He's ignored. So the 9 o'clock base is building. But it feels like it's just the slow pounding away like a blacksmith from Napoleon to the bottom right. 40 supply lead, more hot pink crashing in. And you can almost feel like the waves of units, like the slamming of that hammer. Last Reaver is out, that Nexus, without a lot of health. And units flooding in bottom right. I think that... Hopefully, I, I think that's the GG moment. Napoleon just needs to A-move a lot of these troops. Fisheye fighting it out to the last. Maybe frustrated with... Because he was in a really good situation in a lot of points in this map and just not able to turn it into a victory. Definitely one he's probably going to review the uh, replay of overall. It's not out of the group, but it looks like Napoleon is going to advance at top position. Crazy one here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.